And if you're one of those jerks that puts a friggin' 50 in somebody's hand when they want to go shooting for the first time, you should just be beaten with a rubber hose like behind the local YMCA or something. Before we get into this vast array of pistols that I have in front of me of varying size and dimension and purpose, again, all great things. What we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna go over some of the key traits and trade-offs that you're gonna go with one side versus the other. Remember, if you're buying your first pistol, just like everything else in your life, you wanna make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck. But you have to understand that there are limitations, you know, pluses and minuses to all things. So let's say we get like here, the one that everyone says is do it all pistol. And they're not wrong, this is a Glock 19. When you get yourself a brand new pistol, your first gun, even if it's used, you wanna make sure that you can actually work the gun. And what I mean by that is you have to be able to work the controls. You have to be able to shoot it, mitigate that recoil, put effective rounds on what you're shooting at. And that's going to take time and practice. So don't get too rattled. But as you go from big to small, especially if like, for instance, almost all the guns here are of a nine caliber variety, just to be safe, um, you're going to notice between large and small that they're going to have a different feel to them because when you take material, you take size, you take surface area, all these things that help you control something exploding in your hands and sending a projectile far, far away. There's a requirement of mass and physics and all that that takes place. So let's bear that in mind. Just because the gun is small doesn't mean it shoots little. Just because the gun is big doesn't mean it goes boom. For all the same caliber, they're all going to feel different because they are different. Different purposes, different reasons, different things. So let's get into the guns. One of the guns that is actually not super well known to me, but is actually a really cool little gun. Again, we're trading off, you know, that that size, that recoil for ultra concealability. Look at this, look at this little guy. Sig P238 fits in the palm of your hand. Great for in your little belly band, in your purse, your pocket, wherever you want to stuff that little sucker. It's a little 380, so it's very, very similar, if not identical, to a 9mm round, with the exception of it's a little bit shorter, a little less powder, so a lot less thump. Great for super concealed shenanigans. Next up, I don't have a lot of experience with this pistol. This is a Car PM9. The Car PM9 is, I would say, the little bit bigger version of this, only it's, you're stepping up to a 9mm round. With that, you're also taking away some of the safety features, polymer instead of alloy. This seems like it's a pretty cool little pistol, almost like if you're stepping up. Not a build quality thing, just an actual manipulations capability. Seems like a cool little pistol. I kind of want one now, after playing with it for so much. But this is like your next step up. Again, concealability, polymer, ridges. Your pleasure, my pleasure, we can all have pleasure. Deedle, deedle, deedle. Another super popular one would be the Ruger. The Ruger LC9, that's this is right here. LC9S, another nine millimeter, another polymer. This one you'll feel a little bit of a weight difference. Smooth edges. This is a very popular gun for kind of all around stuff. Just like, you know, like say a Glock 19 and MP 9 c uh, A lot of those kind of as we get larger up, this is in the same kind of weight class as your shields and things like that. This is a great little gun. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, it's, it's the trigger mechanism that doesn't do it for me, but this is a very, very economical option and it's a reliable option. option. These actually do really, really good both in sales and reality. Next, we're gonna get into the hands down. I mean, there was a time when you couldn't get these, you know, because they were so damn popular, but the M&P Shield, especially in nine, not 40, but in nine, we've even done a review of it. A little iCart over here. Uh, we'll link to that. But the Shield nine is, Hands down, probably the most ergonomic, most comfortable. Um, this isn't even like me trying to be a fanboy. But look all over the internet. The Shield 9, to this day and age, people say this is a great concealed carry gun. This is like right in the middle of the road. This is before we start getting into quote unquote big boy guns and we're out of the realm of super compacts. The Shield is very reliable. It works really well. There's a great aftermarket for it, both holsters and triggers and things like that. Shield 9 is a rock solid, you know, right in the middle of the road gun. Here it is, the moment we've all waited for. What every gun guy says to you when you say, I could have a pistol. What do I get? Uh, let me tell you what I think you should get. I think you should get a uh, Glock 19. Yep, enough said. Glock 19. Because Larry Vickers. I just like my found Larry. He doesn't even know who I am. But the Glock 19 is your, your, your walkway, your pathway, your method into Field, field pistol, service pistol, um, duty pistol, that whole realm. This is essentially I think, a full, uh, what Kyle Lamb said, a full fighting pistol without being a full fighting size. Um, this gives you basically much more capacity. It's gonna weigh more. 
and it's huge aftermarket. There's a billion holsters for this, aftermarket sights, box triggers, barrels, you know, weapon lights. This is when we start stepping into the, I am now a gun bro. This is where you're at. When you get one of these, you're not there yet. This is like you, you just bought your Honda Civic. Once you get this all Tokyo drifted out and you become full you know, Instagram gun bro, then you know you're in. And then you start getting into big boy guns. Big boy guns, despite caliber, start getting into full considered you know, service pistols. That's your four inch, four and a half inch, five inch, five and a quarter, these big dogs. Now I grabbed this one because I didn't want like Glock, Glock, Glock. But the M&P, the Ruger, uh, all the ones that are of this same, you know, compact, this isn't really compact, especially once you've seen pistols like this, but this is technically a compact pistol. Once you get out of that realm, you start getting into your four and a half, your five inches, your M&P, you know, I, everyone knows if you've watched here, look there. There's a review. You watched. I do love this pistol. The M&P 2.0 series does fantastic out of the box. It is an amazing gun right out of the box. Um, but in this same realm, you're going to have your Glock 17, your Glock 34, your longer slides. You're going to feel a lot less recoil, and you're going to have a lot more surface area, a lot more mitigation, better accuracy right out of the gates with something like this versus something like this. What do you see as a difference? I'll tell you what, we'll even go here because. That's nine to nine. This is unfair. Go. What do you see? What do you see? A lot more grip, a lot more slide. Everything's gonna move a lot differently. Plus the ergonomics. This is made to be concealed. This is made to fit your hand fully. Big, big difference. Now, can I defend my house with this any more or less than I can with this? Well, yeah, I mean, it's arguable at this point. Capacity, size, lights, Ugh, we can go nuts. But in reality, they both shoot bullets. So we're gonna go back to the beginning and which one you run the best, which one you can handle the best, which one you can do with your eyes closed upside down while you're practicing Spetsnaz, you know, shovel throwing drills in your living room. The wife will get a kick out of that one. Um, there is a big difference. And knowing the right tool for the job is all laid out before you. I think that was like the high sign for Sorry, man. So, before we wrap it up though, you always have that one friend. I think I want a 1911. I'm not gonna crap all 1911s. 1911, John Moses Brown, um, he started basically one of the most iconic pistols of all time, aside from Buck Rogers, of course. And it's 2018, guys. This is still a thing. Like it, hate it, seven rounds, two more whores, whatever you want to say, this gun is still here. So, which gun do I recommend? Well, when it comes to 1911s, I recommend, ooh, there's no mag in there. This is a Springfield Armory, mil spec 1911. Plain and simple, good solid design, good decent reliability. We'll save the jokes for the comments, but it's a solid metal pistol and you're only into it for less than $700. Everyone who's ever gotten you know, into 1911s, you're either gonna love it in the first 50 rounds of white box, or you're gonna hate it. And if you love it, you can grow from here. If you hate it, you're not dealing with a trade-in that has a comma in it. So if you wanna get started with 1911, I would highly suggest Springfield Armory, 1911 A1, good old fashioned. My two world wars. When people ask you, this is not for you. you guys. I hope you enjoyed this, but I'm going to talk to the gun bros now. So when somebody asks you, what should my first pistol be? Don't make a recommendation based on what you have, what you want to get, how many classes you've been to, how many rounds you slung down range, because two reasons. One, they're not going to listen. The price tag is going to affect a decision. And two, they're not where you are. At some point, you had your Ruger Mark III, you had you know, a Ryder BB gun, you had something that got you that bug that got you where you are now. So make rational decisions and don't, don't sell your ego, because I've fallen victim to it as well. Don't sell your ego, sell what's best for that person. That'd be my only two cents. We'll talk later. For all of you that are still sticking around because you wanted to hear you know, the mommy daddy talk, I get it, you know, we were all kids on the stairs once. So just to wrap all this up with a nice tidy bow, if you're one of the people that are watching this video because you don't know what to get for your first pistol, 
Of course, in this age and generation, we're gonna look online. Go through this quick little checklist. What do you actually want it for? What are you gonna do with it? How does it feel in your hand? Can you run the gun? If you can answer all those questions, it's gonna help you narrow down the field a lot. Best of both worlds, know that no matter what you do, there's gonna be trade-offs somewhere. So get ready, because like holsters, can't get just one. If you're one of the guys that are actually, or, or gals, one of the guys or gals that is, you know, being asked the question, make sure you're kind of, I would say, qualifying that person. You know, what do you, what do you, not just you think they're capable of, but what do you think is best for what they're trying to do? Bring them to a range. It's the best way to ever help anybody out is bring them to a range. Let them try one of your wide variety of pistols. See what works best for them. And if you're one of those jerks that puts a friggin' 50 in somebody's hand when they want to go shooting for the first time, you should just be beaten with a rubber hose like behind the local YMCA or something. I don't know. That's all I have. Leave comments down below. Been a pleasure. See you on the range. Beaten with a rubber hose. Yep. You said it.